What's going on everybody? Today I want to do a quick overview of a recent AR pistol build that I completed. Just kind of show you guys what parts and components that I used. And first here I just want to show that this is a fully clear weapon. Go ahead and drop the magazine. Nothing there. Fully clear. If I have any newbies here to the AR platform, the best way to check and make sure that this is a clear weapon is to lock your bolt to the rear. Actually stick your finger inside this opening right here. And then you hit this button on the side here to ride the bolt forward. <laughs> Just joking. Let's don't do that guys. Keep your fingers out of here. Just showing clear weapon, ride the bolt forward. Magazine's empty. We'll put that bad boy back in there. All right, so what we have here, um, we'll just start going through the components list of what I used uh, to do this AR pistol build. Um, I went with the 10 and a half inch configuration. This is just a carbine length one and seven twist nitride barrel. For something like this that I just use for plinking, shooting steel plates, and for home defense, I don't get too picky on what barrel I use. I did want carbine length gas tube. Uh, that way I could use my uh, adjustable gas block. I did put an adjustable gas block on it because I do run this typically with a suppressor, and I'll show you what that looks like with the suppressor mounted here in a little bit. Uh, but we'll just start right up here at the front. Um, I use a Griffin Armament Recce 7 suppressor. So I have one of their um, taper mount uh, flash hiders screwed on up here. Not pin welded or anything like that, just screwed on. With this flash hider that I went with on this one, uh, you actually don't have to time this flash hider. So that's kind of nice. Um, I did go uh, with the Geisley. Mark IV rail handguard, uh, the m -lock version. I really do like this handguard, super light, um, just very sturdy, but saving a lot of weight and it locks up really easily, really nice. Um, very good construction, all of Geisley stuff, you know, top notch. And off the side here, uh, this is actually a cheap light, but to my surprise, um, probably gonna keep this light on here. Uh, it's actually out of batteries right now, so I can't show you kind of what the beam looks like. Um, I've got some of those on order, they're just not here right now. So this is a knockoff of the Surefire 300 or 400, um, but it, um, it's a little bit off color as far as the flat dark earth goes, matching my theme with everything else. As far as the light goes though, I've been very happy with it. I do run the uh, pressure switch pad right here. I just, I think you guys can see it, but um, we got the, the wire running right here. Then I just got it zip tied down right here to the top of the, the, the rail. And then on the other side, show you here, the indent here on the hand guard, I just have the pe uh, pressure pad right here. So it kind of lays in there perfectly, um, but whenever, I'm using this M-lock uh, handguard. My thumb kind of sets right there perfectly whenever I need it. Otherwise, it's up here right behind the front sight post. So that's real, real easy, real nice to use. Um, so my overall length on this AR pistol is less than 26 inches. 26 is uh, a big number whenever you're talking about AR pistols. So anytime from the front of your barrel, if it's not a pinned and welded muzzle device, to the end of your buffer tube, if that number is less than 26 inches, you cannot have a vertical foregrip. So what I went with, the Magpul M-Lock, um, I just call it the handguard. I didn't really like this at first, but the more that I use it, I really do like it just because there's a couple different options where you wanna let your hand ride while you know you're moving maneuvering the weapon system. Um, what I do is I just put my index finger in front of this first tab, and then my pinky kind of goes back towards this longer hand stop. And then I'm able to wrap my thumb over top, and then I can control the muzzle very securely whenever I'm running the weapon. 
I don't know, just fits me well. I run some vertical grips on my other weapon systems, but overall been pretty happy with this setup so far. Uh, moving on back, I don't get too picky on my upper receiver and lower receiver as long as it's in, you know, in spec. Uh, I don't get too picky on it. There's only uh, two or three different companies probably that's making these things anyway, so it's just a matter of what roll mark you like on your lower receiver, but um, my setup is just Palmetto State Armory. I think just because I probably caught these on sale, they always have crazy sales going on. Uh, so like I say, not too picky on the upper and lower receiver combo. As long as it's in spec, it's good to go. Uh, switching over here, probably can't see it on the video, but uh, definitely don't want to skimp on the bolt carrier group. Uh, I went with the bolt carrier group from Bravo Company. That's what I run in all of my AR-15 platforms. Um, very solid company, very good construction. Never had one let me down. Uh, the optics that I'm running on this, the, I'm running the Vortex Spark AR model. I, I run a lot of different Vortex stuff, rifle scopes, uh, got range finders, binoculars, all kinds of goodies from Vortex and uh, they've never let me down. Very good warranty, as everybody knows. <clears throat> they stand by everything. And out of all the uh, different optics, uh, rangefinders, binoculars, I've never had to use their warranty anyway, but I do know it's there if I need it. And then I just have the uh, Flat Dark Earth Magpul Embus front and rear setup. So I've got co-witness if I need that. You know, in case this thing fails on me, runs out of batteries, uh, break it or whatever. I've still got front and rear uh, backup iron sights. And then I went with a um, extended latch Strike Industries uh, charging handle, just flat dark earth, so it kind of matches the rest of the setup. And then I went. I think this is a Odin Works oversized uh, mag release. I really like that because. It kind of is kind of indented right here on this extra tab and your finger just sets right in there. So just real easy to, to manip manipulate whenever, you know, you're doing speed drills, um, firing at those steel plates that aren't firing back at you. Um, just real easy to maneuver that. Uh, did go with a Ambi safety selector. I, I really like running those on all of my AR platforms. Uh, I got the extended latch over here. And then this side is the short stubby version. Um, seems like I run this over here a lot. It's just real easy to manipulate. And then as far as the trigger group that I'm running in this, I went with the Palmetto State Enhanced Polish Trigger. Um, pretty pleased with it. Uh, it's not the best that I've ran, but it's definitely better than mil spec. Um, I, I run some Geisleys in my other other rifles also run a LaRue MBT trigger. I don't think it's as good as the LaRue and it's definitely not as good as a Geisley, but for what I'm using this rifle for, um, it's perfectly fine. I like about anything, you know, a step above mil specs. So just running the regular Magpul grip, using typically Magpul magazines. And then what I really like about this setup, well, like the whole thing, this, this thing's just super fun to shoot, super easy to control. And um, the big thing on this, this is fairly new to the AR pistol uh, industry or components, however you want to say it, but this is the SBA3 tactical uh, stock. So the crazy thing about AR pistols is this is what separates this from being a pistol compared to an SBR. If I was to take this off, which is very easy to do, um, if I was to take this off and put on a regular AR-15 stock, this thing would be an SBR and I would need a tax stamp. So the, the Velcro right here, you know, it just comes undone. And then your arm actually goes inside this rubber part of the stock. This bottom part here is very flexible. Your arm will go in there, then you would just cinch this down over your forearm, and then you can kind of control the weapon with one arm. But the nice thing about this is you are able to shoulder this 
with this stock on it and it's just so easy to control and run being a shorter weapon system. The sling that I went with on this is the Blue Force Gear VCAS, the Vickers Combat Application Sling. Uh, really like this, it's, it's a real speedy system. The nice thing about this Geisley Mark IV rail is it does have a rear spot for QD and then a front, well you can't see it there because of the light, but right here is another QD slot. And the SBA3 Tactical Pistol Brace, um, it has a spot on each side for uh, QD. And then I'll just show you here real quick what this looks like when I run suppressor. These QD or these taper mounts are super nice. So easy to just take this off of one weapon and throw it on the other. Just get that on there and then just kind of cinch it down pretty snug. And right here gives you an idea of what this looks like with the suppressor. So that's about it. I just wanted to do a quick run through, kind of show you guys the parts that I use for this build. Uh, it's a fun build, my first AR pistol. Um, always really interested in having an SBR, but didn't want to mess with the hassle of the tax stamp. I know I have some others for my suppressors that I use, but um, just felt kind of silly for just having a short rifle. But uh, this is an easy way to get past it. Used to in the past, AR pistol uh, stocks, or I think they want you to call them braces. Uh, they weren't real secure, they weren't real sturdy, but um, there's a few out there now, along with this one that I use, that are uh, can't really tell a big difference between this and a stock. Pretty crappy day outside today, so I'm not going to be able to get this outside and kind of show you guys how it runs. But uh, if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to ask below. Uh, make sure and follow along, guys. Subscribe. I'll be getting this thing out, running it through its paces. Give you guys an idea of what it looks like, how it does, um, you know, under fire. For you guys that have asked any questions on my other videos, you know that I do try to get back with you quickly and answer those questions for you when you're trying to make decisions or just looking for information. So, as always, I appreciate you guys following along, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Later.